The Power of the Precious Blood by Gwen Shaw, Chapter 3, The Edemic Covenant. From the time of the fall, it seems to have been necessary for the blood to be shed for the sealing of each new covenant with God has made with man. The anti dilivian dispension, which is timed from the fall of the flood, began with God making a covering for skins for Adam and Eve. While there is, possi- while there is a possibility that the covering of skin is the one we wear today, It is also highly probable that God used the skin of an animal to cover the nakedness of Adam and Eve. Unto Adam, also to his wife, did the Lord make coats of skins and clothe them. Genesis 3.21 The word skins in Hebrew is or, skin, by implication hide, leather, clothed in Hebrew is labash. To wrap around, put on a garment, to clothe oneself or another, to arm, to put on, to wear. Nowhere is it stated in the Bible that God slew an animal to clothe Adam and Eve, but it seems highly probable that he did this. In so doing, he clothed the nakedness of man with the sacrifice of a living creature. It is probably from this example that Abel learned to bring to God an offering of the firstlings of his flock, the best and fattest of his sheep. Man has always felt his nakedness before God as he sought to be covered. Abel, righteous man that he was, knew that his covering was not his father Adam, or his own skin, or the garment he wore, but the covering which the shed of of a sacrifice alone can give. So it is today our only covering as we approach the dazzling brilliance of a just and holy God is not another mortal man of the same cursed flesh as our own, but the blood of the slain of the Lamb of God. As we are covered by his blood, we can approach the Almighty and have audience with our God. Yes, we may see God and live. Noahic Covenant The second covenant that God made with man, Noahic, was also sealed with blood. The, that the very hour Noah went out from the ark, he built an altar unto the Lord and took of every clean beast and every clean fowl and offered burnt offering on the altar. And God smelled a sweet savior, a savor, a pleasant, sweet perfume. And the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground for man's sake to the labor of man. Although the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. And never again will I smite every living thing as I have done. During the whole existence of the earth, sowing and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. Genesis 8, 21, 22. Then God blessed Noah and commanded him to multiply and promised to supply him with food from the beast of the field and the vegetation of the earth. And then God made a covenant concerning blood. But flesh with the life thereof, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. Genesis 9, 4. Another translation renders it, but the flesh with its life, its blood, you shall not eat. God said if man would eat the flesh of an animal which had not been properly slaughtered first, whose blood had not been shed, he would take that man's life from him to us who always slaughter an animal before we eat it. This law seems superficial, But there are countries where man eats living animals, even living humans. This is true of one of the Satanists, even in our country, who cut off the fingers of their sacrificial victims and chew on them and drink their blood, besides doing many other damnable and cursed things which we have no desire to go into now. God was teaching Noah to honor the blood of the beast and of man, because he said there was life in the blood. On the battlefield, many perfect, uh, perfectly healthy humans, strong and young, can get only a small cut in one of the main arteries or veins, and you'll see his life flow out with every drop of blood that pours from the small and non-infected wound. No germ killed him, no deadly disease, there was no mangling of limb, just the loss of his blood was the loss of his life. God said, Whoso sheddeth man's blood... By man shall his blood be shed, for in the image of God man was made. Genesis 9 verse 6. 
The Abrahamic Covenant God made a covenant with Abraham, Genesis 12, 1 to 5, a covenant of righteousness by faith. This did not eliminate Abraham from making offerings to God. He built many altars to God, Genesis 12, 7 to 8, 13, 18, 22, 9. In Genesis 15, 9, we read of God asking him to bring a particular offering. Offer me a heifer of three years old, a she-goat of three years old, a ram of three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. When he obeyed God, God gave him a revelation of what would happen in the next four generations of his descendants. The last altar that Abraham built was when he was ready to offer up his son Isaac, Genesis 22, 9. After that, we never read about him building another altar or offering another sacrifice. It was not necessary. His love had been tested to its limit, and he had not been found wanting. God did not require the blood of Isaac for an offering because God would need only one. That was his only begotten son to die for our sins of the world and Abraham. And until he would come and be that offering, God would accept only the blood of animals. When men in heathen rites of offered up their children in sacrifice fires of demon worship, it was an abomin- it was abomination to God. Steady questions. 1. Read Hebrews chapter 4 and 5. 2. Memorize Hebrews chapter 13 verses 20 to 21. 3. How did God cover Adam and Eve? Do you think he killed an animal? 4. What is our true covering? 5. Describe the Noah covenant. 6. What law did God give Noah that still stands today? 7. In what way was the Abrahamic covenant different from the Noahic? 8. Why did God not require the death of Isaac?